So let's get right into our first uh, conversation, which is on how digital disruption is reshaping industry. And I'd like to introduce to the stage Barry Liebert. So yesterday, I want to make sure you know, I was a real estate guy in the old days. Location, location, location. I ran the Hancock's real estate arm. Two billion dollars in those things. You can see them out the window. They're cool things. But they're, I would say they're toys for boys, right? They're things. You're sitting in them. They're chairs. They're tables. They're assets in audited balance sheets. However, something really happens. Digital comes along, changes the nature of who we are and what we do. It changes the risks and rewards for those who keep up. It changes how di industries, countries, leaders, and others participate, and ultimately, the context of leadership, I might argue the word should be followship, becomes our reality. But employees are expenses. It goes back a thousand years. Chairs are assets. Employees are expenses. So people don't recognize us as economic assets that need to be connected. Right? The wrong side of our brain is thinking. So we had to do some research in partnership with Deloitte. We looked at 40 years of research, looked back at every publicly traded company. We found some amazing things, nothing that should have surprised us, that essentially technology alters the nature of humankind, of human endeavor, of human reality. So in the old days, not more than 100 years ago, 97% of us in the room would be absolutely farmers. How many of you are farmers now? Not many. One, Len. So we have two. So we have two farmers in the room, not many of us. Then we move to the industrial age. We all start looking to make things. Then along comes Maytag man, right? You have to service the thing you make, right? Make things and service things. We build the services economy. I'm an ex-McKinsey guy. We start servicing the things we make. This isn't, shouldn't surprise any of us. Then all of a sudden we go, oh my gosh, we can use some technology to do some self-service. We can build some software. Oh, this is a cool thing. We don't have to send out people to service a Maytag machine. We can let things use called software do it. We can have Microsoft put desktop stuff around us. And then all of a sudden, something happens. We realize we're the network. We're the human network. We're the power of what we were always intended to be. We were and are the center of our relationships. It is our human pursuit to be connected, to be with each other. So what happens is we went further. We said, OK, with people who have assets, what's their value? Because really what businesses are are combinations of assets. I heard it story at the dinner last night that says it's like a sporting team. You put together assets in a way that create value. So what do you do? So people put together physical assets are worth one times revenues. This is global or publicly traded companies 40 years. Shouldn't surprise us. Things don't scale. You can't take that building or this podium or that chair and turn it into another one. They don't scale. There's one of them. Services are hard to scale. You have to hire another person, another sports person. You have to do something to, encow, to house the other human. What we think, oh my gosh, our thoughts are endless. Our thoughts are seamless. Our thoughts are amazingly valuable. We can create a world of ideas, and we can be valued for them. And that's not even as powerful as who we know. The network of who we know, the crowds of who we know, is even more profoundly true because it is the power of humanity. It's the power of us. Identify all the assets, tangible and intangible, who you know, what you know, what they're doing, and financials. Most of my clients can do the financial stuff. Allocate your capital to the digital divide. Everybody needs to move. We are of the human kind, which means we are going to pursue each other no matter what it takes. We need to then operate ourselves as a network. We are ourselves a body network. My electrical system, my nervous system, my brain system, my heart system, no matter what my doctors think, I am a system of parts that is connected. There is a mind-body connection. It is the same in business. And then we need to track, using big data, the results of our actions. 
Kevin Kelly was right, founder of Wired. In the network economy, success is self-reinforcing. It obeys the law of increasing returns because we will pursue each other in our pursuit of well-being. It is our reality. Not just with our families and friends, but with each other. We will seek each other out for support, whether it be on open table, or Trap Trip Advisor, or Airbnb, or Uber.